Hello and welcome to another episode of Blue Alpine TV. In today's episode, we'll talk about what happened with Nano or Rayblox and Bitgrail, and we'll talk about Zcash helping people out in Venezuela. Before we get started, um, we have heard the comments about the uh, microphone issues and we're working on it. I already ordered kind of a uh, pop filter for these P's and B's um, that I'm speaking that are a bit louder also for the podcast listeners. So apologies for that, but we're working on that and hopefully I will fix this soon. So let's jump right into this story. So the nano team target of cryptocurrency class action lawsuit. Um, First of all, let's talk talk about nano. So nano is um, a cryptocurrency that was kind of launched as Rayblox in 2015 by Colin Le Mahieu. And he has kind of like renamed it into uh, nano um, just a couple of months ago. And what nano is, is they're kind of... um, provide very very speed uh, like uh, quick transactions instant transactions zero fees and infinitely scalable how are they doing this um there's something called uh, this um so every nano user kind of has its own blockchain and these are kind of t- connected together in what is called a larger directed acyclic graph we'll dive a bit more deeper into the technology here uh, in, a, in, a, in another video but for now just know that it is not a traditional um, cryptocurrency such as a bitcoin or ethereum and doesn't use the same amounts um, the same types of uh, proof of work or proof of stake or uh, these kinds of things so it's um, a bit more different when it comes to the technology part now a couple of um, months ago or actually in February, so that was about uh, two months ago, um, the Italian cryptocurrency exchange Bitgrail lost around 170 million US dollars worth of nano uh, of the currency called XRB. Now, um, the the case since then has been quite, um, I want to say, intransparent. So both sides, both Bitgrail and Bitgrail actually since then has, uh, I think, announced insolvency. So they are they don't have enough money to continue working right now because this was a huge, huge hack for them. Um, So both parties, especially Bitgrail, started with pointing the finger at Nano and kind of saying that it was Nano's fault. Um, in this case and then nano said no it was kind of the 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 bug that was in their system that allowed hackers to get access to all of these funds now what has started now is basically a class action lawsuit and it has been filed against nano and key members of its core team for allegedly violating federal securities law now nano the company is registered in the u.s so technically um, a u.s law will apply here although bitgrail is for example in italy um, it the class action lawsuit has is represented by silver miller law firm and they're kind of um they've already have these actions already pending against coinbase kraken bitconnect cryptsy and and these types of exchanges so they're kind of um, smelled money in this type of business and they're really focused on uh, getting these class action lawsuits going now um, it says here the lawsuit alleges that in their push to introduce xrb to a wide market of investors nana and key members of its core team recklessly directed investors to open accounts and place assets with small and troubled bit grill exchange where the 170 million us dollars allegedly disappeared in february 2018 now here a bunch of points so xrb until i think um about a month or two months ago was not listed in a lot of exchanges so it has been um, kind of hyped up um, when it was a couple of cents and it quickly jumped um, close to during the the the, the hype uh, season of until mid january it jumped close to 30 us dollars so it made in an immense progress in terms of price but then quickly um, dropped with all the cryptocurrencies but uh, a lot of people actually were um, kind of 
uh, betting on the fact that Nano um, or XRB would be uh, listed, for example, on Bittrex and I think or on Binance. And I think they got selected as the number one currency of the month. And then they um, got uh, kind of uh, selected to be listed on, on um, Binance. Now, a lot of people are always betting on uh, coins getting listed on different um, exchanges and they buy it accordingly. Now, uh, Bitgrail at that time was already troubled in terms of the head box, they had issues and everyone knew about this. And there is now these allegations saying that you knew uh, Bitgrail was a troubled exchange, had already bugs and problems. Why did you promote this on their exchange? Um, and obviously Nano as a company or like an, as an organization is saying, look, this was not our fault. If you have a bug on your system, you have to deal with this. So there's this uh, kind of uh, back and forth going between the two uh, companies. Um, the lawsuits request that the court rescind the plaintiff class investments in XRB and require Nano to rescue fork the missing XRB into a new cryptocurrency to compensate the victims for the losses. So imagine this situation. So you lose money on the exchange. You go to a lawyer and say, well, I've lost money on exchange. It's not my fault. It's the exchange's fault or it's Nano's fault in this case. And you request, or actually that's what the, um, the, the, the law company is requesting, that, you, that they are actually doing kind of a rescue fork and um, returning those uh, tokens back to the people. Now, if you remember in the DAO hack that happened, I think two years ago, a similar situation happened with Ethereum. And there, um, Ethereum actually backed down and kind of returned the sum of the funds, I think, if not all of the funds to the people back. And from there, there was this fork happening to Ethereum Classic because the people, the developers of Ethereum Classic didn't believe that this is the way it should be. And on blockchain, it's non-reversible transactions. So this is kind of similar in that regard, but um, it's similar in a way that people are actually, this is an external company requesting the fork, so it's not happening from inside. The defendants promoted Bitgrail as a safe and reliable exchange for XRB holders. The defendants consistently and publicly endorsed and supported Bitgrail despite many complaints. And these are, of course, these are heavy allegations for the Nano team. And it's not really clear what, what exactly will come out of this. I mean, technically, uh, in my opinion, Nano didn't do anything wrong. If they knew about the bug, then I think the problems could really intensify. But unless they really were aware of this bug, and um, obviously promoting an exchange or saying you can buy this on exchange XYZ is also good for, for the team because they need to make sure that a certain liquidity, a certain distribution is being met by um, the, the, the cryptocurrency. So obviously they will um, kind of promote the different exchanges. Um, and just when we were kind of researching this story, there, uh, the, the, the newest news story that came out, or actually it came out on the blog of Nano, um, it says Nano Foundation announces legal fund for Bitgrail victims. So um, they say while Nano Foundation has no control over how third parties use Nano, which is Bitgrail, we do believe that we can help to promote and empower good behavior. So what they have did, what they did is as a result, we're announcing today that Nano will be matching the contributions of the victims to the legal fund established by Mr. Enger. And Mr. Enger, it says here um, a bit earlier. So Enger is, I think, uh, the, the, the Espen Enger here. We made Esp uh, contact with Espen Enger, a representative of nearly 600 Bitgrail victims at the time, now over 1,400, announcing our plans to establish a legal fund. So Mr. Enger um, or Espen Enger is representing these people um, and obviously trying to get their money back, be it uh, through a fork or through any kind of things. And Nano has approached him and actually said, well, we'll start a fund and this fund will be kind of matched. So as, as much money you can gain or, or gather with this fund, we will double it close to 2 million. So this is exactly what's happening here. So it says that including both past and future donations for up to 1 million US dollars with a goal of establishing a total legal fund valued at 2 million US dollars. Now, 
And Nano doesn't really have to do this. They are doing this probably before legal action happens in order to calm down the situation. Um, it, it could really um, become a big problem for Nano if there was some kind of involvement from before. Um, but as long as this is not the case, I, I don't think Nano is, is really in danger in any way. People are even saying that Nano could go to zero. This is always an option, this is crypto. It's a risky game, um, but I don't think that this problem will actually cause them that. Uh, it says here, our team and Mr. Enger have agreed that the legal fund will be spent solely on the efforts of the victims to pursue their legal interests in connection with the Big Grail insolvency. To date, all reliable evidence we have reviewed continues to point to a bug in BitGrail's exchange software as the reason for the loss of funds. Now, they are still saying, look, we are still in defensive mode. This wasn't our fault. We are just doing this out of goodwill to calm everyone down. But at the end of the day, this was BitGrail's fault. Now, how this all will play out, we will see. I think uh, it would be sad for, for the Nano project because it's a, quite an interesting project and it's a bit of a different type of blockchain technology. And I would love to see how this continues, of course, but also because I really like the technology and I kind of uh, want to see where they're going with it. Next up, we have this new story. Zcash saves the day in Venezuela, but at what cost? Now. As you know, we've talked a bunch of times about Venezuela here and the situation in Venezuela is, is as follows. It has been going through like the worst economic crisis since the country was founded and um, it, there is hyperinflation, uh, goods and, and uh, you can't find any goods in the stores. The Bolivar, their official currency, has lost immense value and um, the dollar is the only value that really counts, but, but dollar is, is very difficult to access. There is embargoes from the United States towards Venezuela and all of these things. And because this crisis has been kind of going on, um, the, the founder of Zcash, Zuko Wilcox, has actually been approached by people um, in Venezuela. It says here, Mr. Wilcox has been following closely at what he calls a humanitarian crisis of the first order. Uh, unfolded in Venezuela, the message he received was later to be followed by many others. All these messages pointed to the fact that people in Venezuela desperately needed Zcash to help cushion them against the deteriorating value of their local currency. So the local currency is falling, they are looking for an alternative and Zcash might be just that. Don't forget Zcash, a privacy coin so it's not really kind of traceable where where the funds are coming from or going to so this could actually be one of the reasons why for example zcash has been preferred and not anything else um, there are rumors that for example if you have a bitcoin mining operation or if you're dealing with bitcoin in venezuela that you can get in trouble with either the government or the kind of illegal the, the mafia type because they are controlling a lot of the mining operations in venezuela because compared to the bolivar the bitcoin is is almost a stable and a good currency so it could very well be that zcash has been preferred by the people from venezuela because it has anonymity and a certain aspect of privacy um, inside. Now, what Wilcox did, Wilcox decided to take action last month by getting into a partnership with a Mexican-based peer-to-peer exchange called AirTM in promoting Zcash as an optional intermediate for anyone hoping to convert Bolivars to dollars. So AirTM or AirTM is, is kind of like um, there's this these ex exchange sites where you can basically send money or send cryptos and then exchange it for another crypto. This is very similar in that regard. Um, however, you can probably send it with a fiat to Zcash. Um, is, well, the, the founder of AirTM says, we're just helping Zcash to get access to people who need it most, not necessarily the people in the States who like privacy, but the people in Venezuela who have been oppressed. Now, this is interestingly, obviously both for AirTM or uh, AirTeam, as well as Zcash, this is a good way of, of also creating um, publicity. Now, as you know, in Venezuela, there's also the Petro coin or the Petro doll that has been kind of created by the government or, or rather the, the president Maduro. And according to rumors, according to unconfirmed news reports, it says that they have raised close to 5 billion US dollars equivalent in this Petro coin. 
Now, um, the problem is as well, as soon as you start, for example, dealing with different cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, the state also has an eye on those transactions and they, you can get really into, into trouble. And obviously Zcash here, uh, says Wilcox, uh, Zcash is an open source decentralized system where the supply and behavior of the network are part of an open global consensus, whereas the Petro is part of a construct and under the control of the Venezuelan government. Now, it will be interesting to see whether um, kind of the, the people start using Zcash to either move money out or to like get certain goods or buy certain things or trade certain things. Um, this is, again, a very interesting use case for cryptocurrency. I mean, you wouldn't be able to create this kind of use case with anything else but cryptocurrencies. So if this works and if the people of Venezuela are actually uh, getting their goods and getting kind of their equivalent in money, that would be a really interesting use case that we should continue following. And with that, guys, uh, we're kind of already at the end of today's episode. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. Don't forget to join the Telegram channel. And I will see you hopefully with a better microphone setup tomorrow. Take care. Bye.